Hello. Animo. And cheer up. So today, we're beginning in a few minutes. Uh, we're starting a few minutes late. But we're going to dedicate the whole session, the whole meeting, this dialogue and conference to answering any questions. How do you like that? So we'll start here. Hello, Mr. President. Oh, they want to know uh, what if you found out about the presidential airplane, does he have the inform information as to the price and all that? And somebody said that there wasn't going to be enough resources after the sale. He says, yes, the president's um, airplane is um, in the process of being sold, as they have said, we've said. It, it's already in the final phase. They presented six um, offers. And ONU that accompany in this process of sale for the presidential airplane is deciding um, I expect that it will be um, the most possible uh, the quickest um, possible, most likely this week, as they've, um, so they've been informed me, but we cannot because it's a, we can't let you know because it's still soliciting process, uh, details uh, regarding the costs or what they're offering, and inclusively, we can't even let you know what the value is before we finish this, uh, the sale process. We did some uh, evaluations of value. So we had um, some tests to see what it, uh, what it was the value so they could use it as a reference and so they could accept so offers. So now we have those values, and now we have the offers, and so now we need to decide all this, it means that we can uh, let people know when the process is done, and we will inform you for, to the people of Mexico here. And if tomorrow uh, ONU decides that there's a good offer and that they accept it because they've been doing investigations uh, regarding the buyers and whether their honorability or the honor of the people and of the companies that want to acquire the airplane. It's not a simple matter. So once we have all of these, we'll give you the information. But yes, we are in the final phase of the airplane sale. And regarding what we're going to obtain, it's a uh, substantial amount uh, because we're also liquidating a credit because it was a financing fund and we were paying and paying on it year 
uh, by year for that airplane and for others in the last six years or the last presidential term they bought six uh, jets brand new besides the presidential jet and six helicopters also that were new so all of that is for sale it's, it's around 73 air uh, crafts that you recall they, they used to use the helicopters even to go play golf do you remember that but now that doesn't exist anymore we don't apply it anymore we don't use it anymore these uh, private air um, so it'll give us uh, finances because we don't have to be paying those uh, credits and it's a sale and that's the presidential airplane to remind you he it was bought by Calderon when they decided that Peña was going to govern as the president elected during that period of the president-elect. Calderón bought the airplane and he signed on the contract. So he left the um, airplane bought by Peña. And of course, uh, he should have uh, not accepted that purchase. But he decided to, to keep the airplane. I wasn't going to get in an airplane like that because I wouldn't want to offend the people of Mexico that they are in such poverty and so, such need. You can't do that. Be traveling in such a luxurious airplane that even Donald Trump doesn't have. Diaz Miron used to say, nobody can uh, aspire to the sur superfluous while there exists those that need even uh, the most indispensable things. So these are the changes. And what's the other question? Here, no, that was it. Okay, so next person. No, 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 so, oh, the question was, is there a loss? It's a loss to be sell paying those credits. And that whole operation of that airplane that we no longer have uh, those expenses. That's another thing. So, what we would pay in, uh, for commercial trips and airplanes the gas for the uh, trucks and the, or what we spend on uh, gas on the jet, comparing those. It's not clear yesterday when they're going to define uh, specific a north um, border uh, to attend to the migratory crisis and also to ask you in June and July there was a lot of homicides in Tijuana, 215 in June, 125 in July, up until the 15th. So what is the solution? It seems that they, are they working on another solution for Tijuana? Yes, there are enough resources 
um, for shelter, for attention to the immigrants. When we created the uh, team to comply with the uh, uh, U.S. Uh, terror threat and all that plan and that thing that Marcelo Ebrard, uh, he made a plan. It has four areas or five. It's migration. That's one. It also has what is called well-being and uh, life-saving for the South and Southeast. It also has the area of northern uh, border, which is Duarte is in charge of. Another area is, is the National Guard. And another is that of Ex, uh, foreign relations with countries in Central America, the relationship with those Central American countries. And, and it included an administrative um, purpose. So, so I'm going to ask that they inform you how much is in that area para, eh, a in order to attend to the migrants. We don't have the data. Es que sí, en efecto, so in effect, eh, though, en Tijuana, in Tijuana, que no es todo Baja that is not all of uh, Baja California, the, the biggest problem of violence is concentrating este, Tijuana. Si an action was done. Uh, we were having about 20 homicides a day in Tijuana at the worst case. And it came down. And there was a, a high point. And then the, the low point and the crisis. And then it peaked again. And now again, for example, I can say that the information. Yesterday they only had two in Tijuana, is my current report. However, there used to be so many more in the median. So every day we're looking at this, and I expect that we will be setting, sending more um, um, National Guard um, elements for the attention of the National Guard depends a lot on the number of elements. So we're uh, uh, getting people trained so they can have more presence. But yes, we are constantly monitoring where there's more incidences of that type of activity. But I can say that there's 10 states that are the, the worst, most active, that they, they mess with our, our median of homicides besides other crimes. There's 10. Today, in the report, for example, yesterday they had 68 homicides. And it lowered yesterday because um, the homicides were dropped in those states. So, so I can say that some in Guanajuato, Jalisco, Baja California, State of Mexico, Veracruz, Veracruz. 
And I'll stop there. So that I don't uh, invent things. However, if there's 68 in one state, and in one station, they have 10, then sometimes the 32 entities, and in half of them, there's no homicides. So 16 may not have any homicides. Not always. But it does happen now. So it does have a lot to do with the uh, so-called organized crime in the case of homicides. I can say that just as we have not been able to lower the incident of homicides, yes, it has lowered considerably this, the, the theft, of, which were the biggest crimes that were the biggest gauge so we can know how we're doing. Because in those crimes, there's no, like, uh, like where people change the numbers, like transportation, uh, uh, kidnapping, sometimes they don't say. But in the case of homicides or vehicles, that's, they always, everything. Like in the case of homicide, they have to do an investigation. So they, they can't uh, hide anything. So that's what I'm thinking. What about the National Guard in Tijuana? When do they expect the, from the Cabinet of Safety? And when is there going to be more elements? It's going to be depending as how they are um, getting uh, capacitated or trained. So as of now, we've uh, got the uh, capacitation. Uh, I'm going to ask the uh, commander of the National Guard to inform you on that. I'll, ask, I'll have him come with the Secretary of Defense and Marine and the Secretary of Public Health. And so they can inform you as to how we are doing, where we are, and how many elements or, and how many are being formed and what the courses uh, are consisting of as information and how it's growing the number of units so that you can have the information and by units they mean like number of uh, soldiers like a soldier unit Presidente, a la fecha Romero de Chan sigue siendo el líder sindical de Pemex con un gremio de 110 mil trabajadores en activo. También sigue manejando 65 millones de pesos por viáticos, sueldos, fondos de ahorro, transportación terrestre. So they're saying this guy Chan is still in charge of a lot of the areas of Pemex. 85 y 251 del contrato colectivo de trabajo de ese sindicato. En ese sentido, Presidente, la actual Secretaria de Trabajo y Previsión Social Luisa María Alcalde, pareciera entorpecer al nuevo sindicalismo de la 4T. So they think there's some pues kind of intrepidation with the new leader. De Pemex, llamado Mario Rubiciel Ross García, por cierto, su paisano. Um, he's from Tabasco <coughs> also, no Mario Rubiciel García. El padre de la secretaria. He's the father. Niano. Curiosamente, también es el abogado personal de Romero so de Chan. Desde there's an attorney that is also su gobierno Está en uh, covering two people. So, we have, forma, terminar con los viejos so they're trying to get rid of the previous pues um, bad leaders, and they were impoverishing the country. ¿Cómo va a How are you? Gobierno? How's your government going to work? Pues hay que decirlo, Son que Those are 
the people that are still living of the people, leeches. So it would have to be something that was proven because I don't have all that information. I'm, I, I don't, uh, I'm not a know-it-all. But I don't believe he's an attorney, Arturo Alcalde, de Romero de Chavez. I don't want it to have turned out that yesterday I said there was no contract and there was no uh, demand on somebody, and in fact there was from Mex, Fertina, and yes, there was in case. So he made an error. What, what there is not is one for against Salinas, but there is one against that other guy. The, so let's set it aside till we can be sure of the details. I don't believe that it was uh, stolen. What I can tell you is that no more we don't allow privileges anymore for no one. That has ended, this impunity. There do exist contracts that need to be respected. Everything that by law belongs to the workers, that needs to be respected. Contracts are sacred, especially when it deals with contracts with workers. What there will not be are agreements, let's say, uh, externally from the law or under the table. We will not give money to syndicate leaders. Actually, we're uh, making a revision of the collective contract of Pemex with the union, syndicato. And the indication is that that the director of Pemex, uh, that the, it was what they said was that they adjust it to the legal. There should not be any privileges for any directors. And act with austerity and justice. For example, and this applies to all, the number of commissioned cannot be greater that there be uh, 1,000 to 2,000 commissioned people, in other words, the leaders like the aviators that you mentioned, for directors. You can't put so much money into that. So the director of Pemex already has been uh, notified and is aware it will not be the same as before. That's what I can tell you. What about, there's been several leaders that have already, out. Oh, so they should not be preventing the taking of notes. But not just that leader, there's others also. He says in all cases. I can make note, or I am taking note, and I will ask that he inform me, because there is the right. It's not an illegal right thing, but they do have liberties for association and syndical or uh, union rights. Next question. They spend 
solo en cárceles federales en el prison system where Spain finally in pesos daily corrupción en esos centros penitenciarios que se generan entre jueces, abogados independientes y bufetes jurídicos encabezados por políticos algunos. Y si dentro de las cárceles llevaría también la cartilla moral, porque cuando los reclusos salen de las cárceles vuelven a delinquir, incluso vuelven a regresar pues a esos eh, lugares donde permanecen años. De... Pero lo mejor es la aplicación the, de los programas. The best thing is to apply the programs for adaptation. Y eso and, pues pasa and that happens por limpiar de corrupción uh, when you las clean, cárceles. Uh, the, Tales of corruption and all the businesses that unfortunately are, are given uh, around the uh, uh, jails or whatever. We're working in that sense in order to end with corruption in the uh, jails and uh, eh, holding uh, units and starting with of the authority ejemplo, that they give an example because it used to be eh, corruption en la compra de los in the purchase of the foods for the uh, incarcerated Como for example todo, in everything else We're cleaning up all the whole administration of, of jails and prisons. And of course, we're going to analyze, and there's religious groups that go to the jails or prison, that there not be an obstacle for them to be able to, uh, to continue to do their uh, labors to encourage um, spiritual values. There's even uh, actors or artists that go to promote art and culture and the moral uh, card. And I used to say before, I don't like prisons or jails. That's why I believe that it is better to prevent, that it's better to attend to the causes, uh, security and violence, that there be jobs, that there be well-being, that there be happiness, that there be possibility to study, to work Escuelas, for schools, cárceles. not jails. A veces Sometimes es it's, it is even barato. cheaper este, to create schools than to have jails. Ya no solo es más humano, it's not just more humane, es más but it's even cheaper, less expensive. It, uh, when I was here, the uh, chief of governor, I had to make two prisons, and it made me very upset, but I had to do it because we had oversaturation in the prisons of the city. There was 30,000 that were incarcerated, and, and it was also an inhumane situation, but I had to make two, two, a male and a female prison to resolve the problem. But I would have rather utilized those funds to continue to construct schools, uh, prep schools, and we made one in every delegation of the city. And so therefore, the model now is to, it's more oriented towards prevention in everything, particularly in health matters. It's better to prevent than to have to try and cure or heal.
y volvemos a lo mismo. And we return to the same thing. No solo es más eficaz, más humano. Not only is it more efficient, it is less expensive and more humane. En enfermedades crónicas. When it has to do with chronic health issues, si hay buena alimentación, if there's buena good uh, uh, nutrition, si, si, eh, and se promueve el deporte, and if you promote uh, sports, preventiva. that's uh, preventative medicine, exercise. So you save because it means prevention, Di like diabetes, like hypertension, that these are the main causes of mortality. It's most uh, frequent in Mexico, whereas before it used to be gastrointestinal and respiratory. Now it seems to be more, more like the heart, diabetes, and other chronic conditions, and cancer. So all these these need to be re-planned. Um, and it's the same thing um, when it comes to insecurity and violence, that we need to attend the young people. And we were working on that today regarding the campaign against addictions that now is urgent to me that we make it go forward because it hurts so much to know how much, unfortunately, the consumption of drugs increases. And that is terrible. So we have to uh, stop the consumption. And one way to do that is the campaign with all the media. And I used to say a few days ago, there's nothing on the radio, there's nothing on the TVs in order to orient the young, the youth. What there is, is this whole um, life, fictitious of success that projects La on TV and on series, no that does not mean that I'm against uh, 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 or to try to um, promote censoring. Es que it's just that es un it's a vida. style of life que se that has been idealized donde where los actores the actors all looking elegant Mujeres and women bellas, beautiful eh, with modelos, like uh, newest cars residences, residences and pools eh, swimming pools and sets eh, that look like off, uh, public offices where they look like they're presidents with dialogues de gente bien vestida, of, of people that is well dressed in the government de la and rep representatives Entonces, of, the, of delinquency. Otro, this whole life, this whole world. Mundo? And this other real? thing is this real life. No. No. no, es así, no. It's not really like that. No. It's just maybe a, a suit de buen gusto. of a good taste or cars, of, um, new cars. But there's another reality. Like the youth that in a short time become addicted and they have to consume drugs that are poison and that they lose their lives 
and that they, they make their families suffer and their mothers cry. That is the other world, the other reality. So it's not to prohibit that ideal world of fantasy. It's to let people know the other. It is urgent to me that that campaign be initiated because at the same time there's already options for the young, youth. It's not just calling them ninis anymore. Now we need to be, uh, should have them all working. As of today, actually, there's about 700,000 youth that are working now in the program Youth Creating, Constructing the Future. And there also is 300,000 youth that have grants of 2,400 uh, pesos monthly so that they can study in the universities. So not only those uh, the youth constraining life and the 300,000 uh, for youth in the university, we're talking about a million of youth, uh, youth that are being attended to. So there's options. And we're also working on the attention to the youth when it comes to prevention. Now that I'm visiting the hospitals of Bienestar or Health Wellbeing, they have a very good program that's very important. And there, there is a psychologist in every hospital. And they have four programs. Orientation in order to prevent uh, early pregnancies, unplanned pregnancies. It's very important because of what's happening with uh, pregnancies of adolescents. So that's one Another program. Another program that's important is it's against violence to inside the family that's uh, by no, the families, not to violence. And the third program is against uh, obesity, because this is very important. And the fourth program is addictions, no to the addictions. So it's called cara. C-A-R-A, I guess, the plan, which is attention to uh, adolescents. So now these programs are being fortified because there's hospitals where they don't have a, 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 a psychologist. And it's not being done right. So we need to strengthen. So we're talking about 80 hospitals with 80 programs with these characteristics and additional centers as well for uh, attention to youth. So it is very urgent for us this matter of attending the causes. Gracias, señor presidente. Sandra Greda, de Grupo Laja Comunicaciones. Mi pregunta es sobre el tema que está hablando. ¿Ha pensado en las personas que se encuentran en los adolescentes, adolescentes que están en la calle? Adolescentes que están en la calle. ¿Qué va a hacer con ellos? Y por otro lado, si piensa establecer o no tiene planeado establecer un antidoping en las escuelas, antes puede ser en los meses. Uh, test every uh, about six months or something. Yes, that's part of the program that we're working on. I've also begun uh, to start with a coordinator. Today, we can let you know the name. No. No. 
the person that is in charge of the program is Hugo, is the Subsecretary of uh, Health. And we'll let you know today what the plan is and what we have so far. Presidente Roberto Cruz de Grupo Impacto. Dos preguntas. So I have two questions. Uh, a hard one and an easy one. Esta semana, so this week, Impacto cumple 70 años. Uh, the um, medio político, they have a magazine that's poder, now uh, 70, años, 70 years old desde that has been running since uh, founded in 1949. Crece, and we can see that a country grows and according to empleo, its uh, político, power, political, and uh, economical. Now that you have gained the uh, political uh, control, can you, are you going to use it as a fountain, like an untouchable person? And his power is the main uh, uh, change in uh, society. And what do you consider to be valid powers that exist more be, uh, past the union powers? No, they should not exist more than the powers for legitimately constituted. That is to say, the power demana of the power of, of the people no pueden they cannot haber, uh, otros poderes, have other powers uh, that are created uh, those that el poder, uh, intend the que, power uh, haber need to have searched from democratic processes so in that sense, I am a representative of the executive power because they elected me for that purpose. And now, what about, what do they do with the power? Well, the fundamental part is to serve the citizen. The, your, uh, your fellow man, the power, it, it only has sense or makes sense and becomes a virtue when you put it in service to others. The other is uh, thinking you're uh, something special. It has no value. That's for those that have no conviction, principles, and no idea. So um, power is justified if it's done in a service for others, for society, in conjunction. And now in the personal aspect, as Daniel uh, Cosida Yelas used to say in the personal style of governing, to understand that the power is humility. That. No power, no authoritarianism. The strength de la razón. of reason. Con eso, With that, este, se el poder. you can exercise your power. Y and dicen también, they also say poder, that are uh, regarding power no hay ideales, no hay that when there's no ideals and principles, poder, the power atonta, makes you stupid. If you're even if you're intelligent, and for the dumb ones, it's another thing. It makes them crazy. But if there's principles and ideals, there is no risk 
uh, of becoming a ruined. And it is also say, said that power corrupts and that absolute power corrupts absolutely. Especially when there's no democracy or liberty. But if there's democracy and liberty, nobody can feel superior in the social scale, in any level of the social scale. If democracy is equality, it means to have the same opportunity. Have you ever considered that you've, you've used that uh, excessively? Nunca. No, never. Este, he ejercido mis libertades. I've exercised my liberties, yes. A plenitud. To plentifully. Porque siempre he pensado que la libertad Because I've always thought that liberty se conquista. is not uh, demanded, but it's conquered. Sí. Or, este, yes, mi libertad. I exercise my liberty. Y todos. And all of you, we need to exercise it Sin, este, eh, la without limitations bueno, to liberty. En el mismo contexto, so, Mr. President, in the same context, eh, revelenos can you reveal to us your secret y and eliminate augurio, the saying and preoccupation by many arrancó, that since you started, you have not had a, a day off or no taken rest como los de Guadalupe Reyes. Like, y domingos, like Guadalupe Reyes. De su agenda uh, no, Saturday no, and Sunday, flores. you work every day. I'm not just trying to pretenda uh, like dicho, pretend like you're, solo un florero, it's not just to be uh, saying good things to you, but it's what about your segundo, health? And second, the, uh, regarding the uh, uh, for the fourth transformation to be consumed, isn't there an alert as that re not resting, if it's uh, even if you work daily, is there a plan B to continue with the same rhythm of work, or is there a pact with Mother uh, Earth or someone else? So you've told us you've had arterial hypertension colloquially, and so let's knock on wood colloquially, he said. So do you know of anybody else that could act with the same? Uh, who is it? I'm very uh, healthy. It is public dominion that I had a stroke, and I came out okay. And that is why it is very, very interesting to me, or interests me, that that and many other diseases, vidas that we can save lives for those who have uh, Miren, strokes. Eh, Look here, en los que in the hospitals that I've been visiting, I've, I've been at 17 so far. Solo en dos, Only on two of them have they got the equipment and, and medication para to enfermos. attend to a stroke. No para Not to intervene. No Not cardiologists. But interventionists. Para, eh, la vida. To save their lives. Sino para but the preparatory uh, against medication so that they can get medication so they can get, get to the clinic where they can uh, have the actual intervention. From 17 hospitals, only two had it. And if they don't have this equipment and that medication, they won't. Make it. They won't be able to make it because where there's uh, the attention, of approximately there's a median of four hours 
from the hospital. Let's not even talk about when they're in the community. For example, if you have, a, if someone has a stroke in Huacupla, yes, um, and they can't do it. Uh, they can't attend to them there because they do not have the equipment or the medication. They need to take them if they have an ambulance to Tampico or Poza Rica. And there's four to five hours and he won't make it. So therefore, I had the uh, fortune that I had the stroke here in Mexico from 15 minutes from the hospital. And that's why I can live to tell about it. However, there are very good doctors in our country, very good specialists. And if you attend to the in, uh, infarct or uh, stroke or heart attack, and if you're careful with the uh, uh, nutrition, exercise, and your medication, because it's like a cocktail daily, in order to main, uh, stay tranquil, so then we'll be fine. And you return to yourself, to your former self, and you're like born again. And if you, if you resume all your activities, and if yesterday I saw the, the person that attends to me, my doctor, I guess, practitioner, I had EKG, analysis, and that uh, in your home, if you wouldn't mind checking. So they came to my home and they drew blood for the analysis, and I was 100%. So I'm just letting you know because I know you guys have questions and you want information as to how am I doing health. I can even tell you the uh, results of the analysis and I'm doing very well, 100%. So now I have a commitment to uh, turn myself over, to consecrate myself to this cause as long as I live. So, therefore, a little of my anxiety and my, uh, my anxiety and anguish is time because I will not run again because of ideals and principles. So, therefore, Apparently, it's going to be six years. Well, now there's no more six years because I'm not going to end at the end of uh, November like the other presidents did on the 24th. I'll end at, uh, at the end of uh, September. But that's a little. The, the matter is or the topic is that the transformation requires, first of all, that you establish the basis, which is what I want to leave ready this year. This same year. And not stealing to destine the budget to those that need it the most, to end with corruption, end with impunity, establish a new authentic right of state, that there be well-being, and that there be growth of uh, work, 
and to begin to make the uh, country serene by uh, calming down violence and insecurity. So these are the basis to strengthen that program within five years. For example, why the time? Because the train Maya or Maya train, we have to finish it in three years. The refinery within three years. The modernization of the six refineries, more, no more than three years. The development of Ismael and the two ports, the um, railroad, all these works, three years. The airport of Santa Lucia, two and a half years. So therefore, if I am not for example, we've advanced so much in health and well-being. Eight million people are receiving their pension, double what they used to receive. So we're almost at a million of uh, boys and girls with a pension that have uh, disabilities. They have that pension. And we are also near um, uh, delivering nearly 10 million grants. This is what I was talking about, the youth. And 700,000 jóvenes or youth creating uh, the future. And that's for this year. And it's going to keep growing. And planting life. Now we have people working. To, as of today, 200,000 that are planting life. 200,000. So, yes, 200,000 um, uh, planters, uh, do the math, that they have a total of 5,000 pesos monthly, the, the workers, so they can continue to uh, 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 till their own ground. And so they're, but you have to always be on top of it. So like in Santa Lucia, it came out, the study, the impact ambiental, environmental impact study. And anyway, we still have to wait because who knows who else is going to be making complaints and demands so that we can be working forward. So I need to be paying attention because if I go on vacations or vacation, they advance. Those conservatives. In their plan to impose and prevent that the poor transformation go forth. So I have to be right on it, be pending, uh, monitoring everything. I believe they're about to put it on. Have they already made it public? What? Uh, do you know? Why don't you, um, they're going to put it up on the page of, of the Secretary of um, uh, Environment. It has to be made public. So what else was pending? Is it an obsession? to be on top of everything? No, no, I'm very healthy. I'm very doing very well. I'm 100%. Look here, on Sunday, I slept in Guajutla. We arrived in Tamasuzal, and the final act was in Tamasuzal. And let's see, let's see. So on Friday, we were here. And then we went to Cerritos, 
San Luis Potosí, and we had a like a action activity there. And then we had an activity in Rio Verde, San Luis Potosí. And then I slept in the valley, of La Valle, south. So we woke up there. And in the morning again, because we're going to develop the Aguasteca, which has very much potential uh, for tourism. And then you go, they're going to amplify an airport that they have there. And we've already committed for an investment of 1,000 million pesos in order to develop that Aguasteca. So then they went to Tamuen, to Azatla, another activity in Aguasteca. From Azatla to Tamasuchal on Saturday. We ended Tamasuchale, and we went to sleep Saturday in the evening to Guajutla. And on Sunday, Guajutla, in the morning. And in the, at noon, she pulled the peck, las cruces, in Balcón of Aguasteca. And then from Chicón to Aguasteca, on the road to the city of Mexico, which is five hours. But on the road, which is a privilege to anyway, uh, that I'm live and active, it's a privilege to know, to get to know the whole territory, the beauty of Mexico, the mountains, the canyons, the valleys, the rivers, the vegetation, the vegetation, the green, beautiful greens, the diversity, biological, cultural of our country. So, in order to come to Mexico from Chipotle, you've got to pass Isuatlan de Madero. It's a municipality of Veracruz, uh, the creation of Genero uh, Castillo. And it's a large um, municipality. And so we cross Iguatlan, we pass through a town that's called Pisa Flores. And we passed through, and there was an assembly there that day. And I said, Rojas, that he's the one that's always driving the truck. I said, stop, let's get off. And the people didn't know. In other words, he was not expected. So we get off and we go in to the auditorium, to the plaza, to the assembly out of the program. Imagine, they were so happy because they were already dealing with matters regarding the uh, well-being program. So there with a megaphone, I talked to them. And so goodbye, goodbye, and we took off. And we arrived here at 10 p.m. And that's why I didn't go to sleep in Tlalpan, so I stayed here on Sunday. But I'm very, I'm doing very well. So when I can, I escape. But some people don't like it when I go go to play baseball a little bit. But but I'm very healthy. I'm feeling very good. I'm very happy to be serving my people and to be heading a movement of transformation that besides with the support and the belief in the people that is also happy, that are supporting me and helping me to push this elephant, the elephant, 
that's rheumatoid and has bad habits, that is starting to move, it's giving its few steps. Presidente de todos los mexicanos, Carlos Pozos, reportero de la revista Petróleo y Energía. Entendemos que su salud es importante. We understand your health is safe, uh, important, but we also eh, want you to be safety. We know that in San Luis Potosí, eh, eh, you had an event where your, your safety eh, was uh, aquí, uh, broken, de your circle of safety. People from Tijuana and people and the women from Tabasco in the social webs are asking you, please uh, take care of your security. What's happening, Mr. President, is that, that is somebody failing? Is the National uh, Center of uh, um, Political Dialogue for San Luis Potosí, Carreras? I insist, reinforce your security for the uh, well, good of all the Mexican people. The people take care of me, but it's not safe. Yes, there's a few that go overboard, that smash me. But in general, there's a lot of respect in general. Even those that are not happy because the rules are changing. And they go manifest against. And they're respectful. That that happened in Valles was something that was exceptional or unusual, not normal happening. But what about on the social web? We saw something about some arms. Uh, guns. No, but I'm not going to to get a um, bodyguard. I am not going to get a bodyguard. I've already decided that and defined it. And I only want to ask the people that they help me. No solo es cuidarme. Not only to take care es of me, organización. it's the organization. ¿Por qué? Because eh, son actos, their activities eh, or actions donde mucha gente, where lots of people participate. Y, pues yo a todos. Ellos and también. I want to say hi to everybody, and everybody eh, wants to say hi to me. Pues este, no es fácil but it's not easy to, to open the, the route eh, or the way to make the, the, es the route for me to walk through. And these are the things that I want them to be resolving eh, in order to problems. prevent problems. Eh, There's also inconformities or natural, unhappiness because it's natural, respect. but there's respect. Este, no, no eh, me I nunca haven't agredido. felt like I was assaulted. <laughs> But in this case of Vallas, <coughs> it had to do with, una with an invasion <coughs> to my intimacy because I was already getting ready to get in my room of the hotel and then there. It wasn't correct. I would tell them with all respect. Would you like it if someone came and got into your homes? No. Nobody would like that. So therefore, I also talked to them about that they would be attended to. But in all these cases, also there was the possibility that they were being manipulated. Yes. <clears throat> but the people is another kind of people. Their mentality has changed of the people. They Even if they give them instructions, let's go here and do this. And for whatever circumstance, they go. But once they are there, they don't dare 
nuestros adversarios. Even our adversaries. O sea, porque, because eh, no le hacemos mal a nadie. we don't uh, cause any injury to anybody. Entonces, so therefore, aunque los manden, even if they send them, que, I recall when, eh, fui when, jefe gobierno, when I was chief of the governor, I had a permanent de, dwelling de of Antorcha Campesina because since then they wanted us to give them the money in, in that time, in that case. So for, for uh, uh, vivienda. So what we did was gave it to them directly to the beneficiary, no a la not to the organization. Entonces, so therefore, ponen el planto, they, they put, they put the soñar, plan and a united uh, apparatus that was, was very dice, strong, bueno, very strong, día y noche. day and night. Y además, and besides that, directo, directly to, to my, my office. office. Mm. Pues so, so I tolerated it, yo, but I would pass by, by. Los que estaban, and the ones that were there ahí, at that place no los that were not the directors, but Porque the people that were sent. Because, you know, they sent people, the directors, no but, they, but they go sleep. They don't go wait there uh, all night to try and take care of these directors. Without conviction, they send people. Entonces, so therefore, the people were respectful, y es así. and it's always been like that. Entonces, es cosa so therefore, it's informar. also a matter of Ahora, informing. Plantón, like here, eh, there's a little area, a group of people that want to know regarding their support. Pues and so, so we are informing how we're delivering the, the monies, the funds, which is kind of what we uh, explained here to you. What happens is that the custom was to deliver the money to organizations. And this is not the case anymore. It's not going to be like that. Now they get the money directly to the producer, to the legislator, to the little uh, owners of small businesses, and directly the support for, for, for the ones that are going to buy their grain with uh, guaranteed prices. That's what the, the supports or the funds are being directed to. So no longer is the recourse or the resource given to an organization and then that the generation, the, 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 they wouldn't give all the funds. They would give like little, so they would give so now we're giving them the whole amount instead of it being distributed by dispensaries. It's given directly to them for production. So passing from the assistance in everything to the productive. Because if they have their lands and they have the support to cultivate them, it's much better than to be giving the support uh, funds to somebody else. That's the change. And, and so these new adjustments uh, were generating uh, inconformity. But it, that, we're not going to go back to that, to those uh, times. Now we have a new thing going. So, President, let me ask you a question. Aparece que la unidad de inteligencia fiscal presentó ante la eh, Fiscalía General de la República información en contra de Carlos Romero de Shams y su familia eh, por enriquecimiento ilícito. So there was somebody against Trump that they made a, uh, something about acquiring wealth illicitly. And in the same sense uh, regarding syndicate or syndication. 
de trabajadores petroleros de la República Mexicana. Um, the union of the Republic, I'm sorry, 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 the union of for the union, no vamos a and we are not going to fall el, el, in uh, in violation of the electoral uh, laws. Si existe otro and if there exists another syndication or, <coughs> se está or they're planning something, este, se busca you look for mecanismo the mechanism de conformidad con la and can, uh, to uh, do ne new labor reform. So then the workers are going to decide whom is going to represent them. That is very important. For them to uh, guarantee uh, union uh, syndication rules. So regarding the other part, I have no information, but it's the same thing, kind of what happened yesterday. I have given the instruction that all that implicates or that can implicate a crime needs to be uh, told. It doesn't matter who it is. I just told, uh, had a meeting uh, yesterday, as a matter of fact, with Santiago Nieto. It was yesterday, and the meeting. Today it was another thing. But, yes, well, here, um, they gave him something. So here, let me show you. Jesus tells me, he gave me the, my accordion, that on uh, Thursday they're going to be uh, uh, putting out the impact study for Santa Lucia on that uh, website. I don't know exactly if it's presented uh, a uh, claim, but tomorrow we can uh, let you know regarding that. So do you know why I have a lot of uh, consideration for Sara and, and you guys, all of you guys? It's because there's... Um, uh, uh, cariño, cariño, is, uh, sí, largo, when you have good sentiments Sara towards somebody, las, giras, for those that go to the meetings, and it appears este, pues, también, that they also, eh, giras that all these meetings that are intense with medios, other members of the media, que siempre, este, we always ask that they go cautiously due to all the risks that they run. In the time I've been uh, doing this uh, fight, there have, that some have lost their lives to um, newspaper people that were covering us. I'm, I remember 2006, uh, camera, um, cameraman from Televisa, it was an accident, and now Elio from Millennial, Eliodoro, oh, he, I guess he rolled over at the meeting around 2006 in a, in a, a vehicle that was behind him. But nothing happened to him. So there he is. Fortunately for him, though. But you're always running risks that, that are normal.
Hernández Licona. So why was um, uh, Hernandez de Cormo, why was he fired? Was it because he, he said that there was no resources in Conoval, uh, especially after they talked about austerity? No, it didn't have anything to do with that. In fact, I, I, didn't, I just found out they were saying that. We are not in unjust. So what makes us angry is that they compare us. I hate that. That makes me hot. So it ended his term. Uh, um, so I was informed that the Secretary of uh, Bienestar that she considered that it was time that they make the changes in that place. And I said, sure, that they go uh, start looking at it. And so much so that it, is it not the case that it was regarding what he wrote, because it was uh, about austerity, that this was decided, actually, before he wrote his article. I'm sure of it. I don't know when he wrote his article. I think it was around 15 days or so. But this decision was made approximately more than a month. And I'll tell you why. Because we invited him to participate to Salomon Dagmar, an anthropologist that is member of the council, de Conabat. And he said, no, he wasn't going to come. He didn't want to come. And then also we proposed to him, uh, to Armando Batra, and the same thing. He preferred to stay or to participate if it was only if it was necessary in the council. But this is a matter that is more executive. He didn't have to go. And from uh, the, the Licona, uh, who I have not ever met. So, so they recommended to us to the new person that is an investigator of prestigious uh, with a doctorate. I believe uh, the uh, School of Economy of UNAM, he's a master academic, serious, first quality, first rate. I don't even have I've never actually met him, never had the pleasure. But the Secretary of uh, Well-Being, Health, she did the investigation regarding. So I didn't know this, uh, but, but they blame me about everything. Yes, I work all the time, but I still don't have enough time to know everything. So it appears the one that was there 13 years before that was sitting in that spot. And he's been the only director of that job since its creation. And it's the institute that measures regarding poverty. So the one that's going in is a professional, an academic. And that's all. But it is not true that it was because of this thing he wrote regarding austerity. No. He says, I am not into vengeance. What about that they said that the that the, the growth of uh, economic growth has down to 0 0.9. Yes, I, I still believe we're doing good. So let me make this point. I don't have a lot of faith in those organizations with all respect.
Those orga organizations are the ones that um, uh, pushed the economic uh, neoliberal a policy which caused a lot of horrible things in Mexico. You know, those people, they, they should be asking Mexico for uh, forgiveness and to, to do their self-critique. That is to say, what they should say, what we proposed turned out to be a failure and we caused a great harm to Mexican people because we said that with privatization there would be growth and that there would be employment and that if it rained hard on top there would be a few drops for the bottom and that that you needed to dilute the state and uh, bet on the on the market and that globalization was the panacea and that with the re structural reforms oh my goodness happiness would come with it for the people None of those things occurred. On the contrary, what happened with, with the structural reforms? What did they cause? Increase in taxes, paralyzation of economy. So what was the labor reform? They took rights away from the workers. What was the educational uh, to polarize? They affected the dignity of the teachers, instructors, to leave us without nurses and doctors because they wanted to privatize education. So what about the energy reform? It, it lowered petroleum, more dependency, in the purchase of combustibles, importation of gasoline. Mexico, first or second place of purchasing gas in the world. What were the structural reforms in, in the basis to the destruction of the petroleum chemical uh, corporations. So what were their recipes to, to cause insecurity and violence in our countries? So therefore, so why are they sitting there giving opinions uh, with all respect? We're not going to be listening to those organisms. Oh my goodness. What is going on? We uh, form part of, of the economic, uh, of the system of uh, world finance. But that doesn't mean that, that we don't know what their politics have meant to us. Now, they are they are not going to decide regarding the agenda of Mexico. That has ended. But what about 2%? Won't that be difficult? No, we don't know. Because we're going to wait for the results. It's that before they have the data, they're predicting. So let's wait. And besides that, I'm letting you know in advance. And I'm letting the people from the monetary fund that's international, these uh, experts, these technocrats, 
much these nostalgics for neoliberalism that would, let's see if it's the same thing for growth to development. Because now we're not going to utilize only as a parameter the growth because growth just means that they generate riches. But it can be said that that, that growth is means only accumulation of riches in a few. And so therefore, we need to look, look at those technocrats, see if there's a little progress. that are more progressive, they say, that growth is inclu inclusive. No, it's development. So what, what about it, that additionally? Salary would need to be included. Increase in salary. So how are the salaries? They've grown. That's an indicator. So how are the incomes? The ability to uh, buying capacity. Uh, buying capacity. Uh, employment. Distribution of uh, uh, wealth. Access to education and health of uh, homes, cultures. That's what it is. Imagine we, we came uh, to, in, in uh, the world, we became the fourth country with most mil multimillionaires. So not only were we making uh, United States was the only one that was bigger, and uh, Jap uh, Japan and uh, Germany. We were fourth place in the world with multimillionaires. So that's growth, sure. And in that same period, it was when we had presented the most inequality that has ever happened in the whole history of Mexico. And the data are from the World Bank. So therefore, it's not the same thing, growth and development. But that's just uh, uh, important discussion, a debate for, as they say, to go be talking about the new paradigm. You can no longer utilize the same parameters. They are no good. They don't work. So I used to say regarding the matters of uh, jobs, uh, social security, if you don't take into account that there's 200 uh, 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 planters, because that's an, but it's a job. It's not maybe not a formal work, but it's a job. But the measure is regarding jobs, not regarding like what their social level is. Okay, so let's say the young, the youth, they pay a quota, pay for for a job, for security.
regarding development or the parameter that is most used is that we're in the 74 under Cuba and below Costa Rica, Chile, Uruguay, and Argentina. In Argentina. And so they so they're considering, they're saying we're on number 74 on the level with a qualification of 0.774. To gain to 8, we would be up on the high level. What do you think that with your measures, we could get to those levels since we're talking about development? Of course. Within this six years, he says, oh, yes. We're going to attend to the well-being as never before. It's already been in place. It will mean better conditions for life and work. We're going to take millions out of poverty. It's the primary objective. So that growth needs to be the resolution of income, and it also needs to be indicated substantial uh, that, that it's not just growing for growing, but to affect the, the environment. All these things that were changing, but that the people are going to have more income, they already have more income as of now. I can give you an example. Not everybody had pensions. And the ones that did, they would have 1,160 every uh, two months. Now it's 2,550. But if all the adults, older adults, I think we have 90% right now, 8 million. Imagine a house that's humble, where there's um, two uh, adults, elderly, two elderly adults, a husband and wife, say. Now they're getting now they're getting um, about 11,000, right? Oh, 5,000 each. So that's um, for... They weren't getting that before. That's enough for their food and their sustenance. I'm talking about 8 million people that are all getting that amount. So imagine... Would that happen in the previous uh, six years? Or, or the previous uh, six-year term? So you know what they used to say regarding that? That it was populism. Paternalism. I remember that when they used to say uh, in that program in Mexico, they used to say, in the year 2000. You know what Fox declared? That it was a paternalism or populism, that it was better to put them to work for these elderly. That's the mind, how his mind works. That's a mentality that's porphyrism. As if though it, the elderly hadn't worked all their life and now they needed to have a little bit of rest in their final years. This is applied in Europe. That is a state of well-being and not like that. We say 2,550 in Europe, in uh, many countries, as they get to 65 years old, the pension in Mexican pesos 
would be the equivalent. It's about 12 to uh, 15,000. Uh, In general, universally. So why didn't they copy that? Why they copied what uh, they were ordered by the funds? So, so of course, things are getting better. Of course, we're combating poverty, and we're all going to feel very satisfied. There's a species of inagenization, which it's to be thinking that only we are deserving to live well. And, and we forget about others. So what do we go to the churches for, our temples? What do we go there for on Sundays? So what are you confessing and convincing if you forget the commandments? So what do you substantiate your uh, Christian values? And inclusively, or the doctrine of all reli religions and the thinking of humanists, of free thinkers, that it is not the love. Isn't it the love of your fellow man that's most important? So therefore, why this hypocrisy, this populism, uh, paternalism, what they give to the poor people, and how much were they stealing? How much did they forgive the taxes for the ones on top? Isn't that stealing? Isn't that populism? Isn't that paternalism? They were the, the special children of the regimen, the owners of Mexico. So that ends. And now they can say anything they want. But we are going to do what is corresponds to us, work every, every day for the people. And it's not an easy matter, because even now, with all the resources that our country has, because even that, it still has a lot of riches in Mexico. They didn't finish stealing everything, but the purpose was to, to finish with everything to leave empty. No they have no fill. No they couldn't. Y otra cosa que es and another thing that is very es, important, creo más, I always cultura. believe a lot is in culture en las de los... of, our, of our people. Eso es that is fundamental. fundamental to take the people out of forward and to put order in order to chaos. That's our, our uh, uh, politics, to do a good government. And I know they're going to keep being opposing. And we're going to have oppositions and differences. And it's not important. And it should not preoccupy us. On the contrary, that demonstrates that it's a live, democratic um, people. If there's no democracy, what happens? What happens in uh, three signals, I mean, uh, three centuries of uh, dominion from uh, other people? Nothing would move. You recall of any activity that was important that occurred in three centuries of dominion colonial? In three centuries of uh, dominion of the colonies? And then independence comes. And that was a mobility time, cultural, cultural reaffirmation of our nation, nationalism.
And the reform, another movement, very important. It's the best uh, a newspaper was during the when they restored the republic. The most intelligent, the most patriotic that have been in history. The revolution here in the palace. It came, globalism came from the revolution. And then the decadence. So now what are we living now? A new transformation. Yes, there's going to be changes. Changes, differences. Plural, debate. And this is very good. One more question. Le doy las gracias, presidente de la región lagunera. No sé si me recuerda, desde 2007, defendiendo aquí de tanta, de tanta tranza en el país a, aquí al pueblo. He's been working defending the country since 2007, defending against all this corruption. Batallamos durante muchos años. And we struggled many years putting in applications that were for the governors, for the radios. And now, as the, after working that project, we read the projects of all the candidates. And we studied you, all your pro projects in the water, and many matters. So I have two questions. And someone said here, all easy, not hard ones. One. One. We have there an environmentalist and they got into his car, and they, and as a newspaper man, I am a public accountant, and I can say that, proud. He made a, a newspaper, when, and he used to write when nobody else was writing from the government. And I am grateful that you give the opportunity to the nation and to us to be with you asking you, because we're confident in the project, not in the person. So I have two questions. One, is there, there was someone that they're very tired, the governors. So we people from, uh, that are going to be investing, somebody left them without water for a long time, and decades, and there's new plans, water for the lake, that it's very simple to do, especially what they were uh, they were stealing their water. They could bring it from the Sierra. And you, you met uh, uh, some guy named David, and we worked on that project. We're not ambitious, but they're failing us. And these people are turning to you, and we need to investigate, like you said. And I have lots of investigations here, frauds in the in the quality of water. Can I answer that first, and then the next one? And so let me finish. You like us, the reporters, to tell you with acts, with investigations. And I've been investigating for 10 years. 
Uh, regarding the fraud, regarding water. And the government, the Metropolitan have been giving Coahuila and Durango have been dividing the, the money for themselves. So the governors uh, imposed the Metro bus in, on them. It's a bad job that was poorly executed. And not that I'm saying it. All you need to do is do an uh, audit because now it's uh, twice like they've always done, the neoliberals. So therefore, they requested a stay. And I'm not saying his name because, but I'm angry that he's now in that uh, he's making decisions to slow down the production for the good work that you're doing for the Republic. So we're supporting the airport and the Maya train and other uh, matters that you've proposed. And regarding the lake in Durango and Cahuila, I'm letting you know so they can do an audit and of the work of the delegates because they're spending their money on their campaigns. So why? Because we haven't been working for a job. We've, been, we've put our lives at risk for the republic. Okay. So... I celebrate that we have these dialogues because it helps me a lot to inform the people in general and to the region. In this case, it's regarding the lake. So what do I sustain? That people in Gomez Palacio they did not accept Lo de el metrobus. regarding the metro bus. No lo acepta. They don't accept it. La mayoría. The majority of them. Y sea mano alzada, and o sea, whether it be a raised hand or cierto, papers, the truth is, es que no the people do not want it. Esa obra. That work. Les and I comment that I had um, authorized that they realized that work because it had some logic. It's a metro bus in Torreón that arrives at to the limit of Torreón and Gómez Palacio. Torreón, Coahuila, <laughs> so what they were asking or what they solicited was to continue from the limit of Torreón to go all the way to Lerdo, from Gómez Palacio to Lerdo. A work that was approved in the first part of Torreón, but they hadn't finished it, Pero ya but sí. it was already approved. Entonces, so therefore, hasta le pedí al de de I even asked Hacienda Reales Investments el de for the uh, official authorization in order that sí, I could say it. But now the, the job's almost done. And he sent me the job, and so I saved it, the uh, paperwork. So I think that there was this big protest in general against the metro bus. And one knows when there's a protest that is planned or manipulated, and when it is, it means that it's a, pro, a spontaneous protest, authentic, or in general, 
even if there might be some public, pr uh, private interests are particular. But in that way, everybody seemed to be against it. So I asked, you don't like this? They don't like to talk about it because it's to impose things. I can't impose nothing on the people. So I repeat what Juarez used to say, by force, nothing. Everything needs to be done with reason and by the right way. So everybody was unanimously against it. So I asked, so what do we use the funds on? So there's, there's a hospital that was almost done and the need for the lake, the principal necessity was the water. So the people said water. So then it will be water. So it will be water. And I will argument I will make um, profound uh, information about that matter. They have a serious problem in the lake. Of, uh, they've exploited the aqueducts because they're perforating too perf deeply. There's contamination, and in some cases, there's arsenic in the water due to the exploitation, overexploitation. The alfalfa requires a lot of water, and let's not talk more about that. But it's not about destruction of a, a productive activity, but it's to accept that we need to opt for the development of substantial because the most important thing is the health of the people. So I'm going to give you a piece of data. Do you, do you know what they've done? The governors, they put buildings in order to, or plants, to purify the water, to remove the arsenic, treatment plants. That cannot be. The people deserve to have the security, absolute security, that they are drinking a water that is healthy and pure. And now when you uh, put treatment plants, water treatment plants, for the arsenic, then what you're demonstrating is that there's a problem that's grave. It's not that we are not just going to stay in the development of the plan, and it's not to condemn the projectors because they generate jobs and well-being as well. It's that. You, you have to reconvert to change the activity that is productive in order that you can consume for those act productive activities less water, that you protect the aqueducts, that you don't continue to uh, affect the uh, Areas where Veneciano Carranza was born, it's the lakes, natural, beautiful lakes. 
y que están perdiendo también volumen and that are also losing the volume of water por lo mismo for the same reason entonces so therefore estamos llegando a un acuerdo we're coming to an agreement as this uh, partner used to say that we had a meeting for those that um, are propelling these uh, productive activities it's not to impose anything, it's to convince them. And we will come to an agreement. What are we going to do? What is my compromise or commitment? That we will, and we are now working on it, on the project, to take water, Torreón and Gomez and Lerdo, to the lake. Y estamos viendo si lo and we're hacer also trying to see if we can do it con un with an aqueduct de la presa Sarco. from the uh, lake of Sarco that is como a 50, about 50 to 60 kilometers. We're going to invest in that in order to take water in an aqueduct and then be the first agua thing that's quality water for the people. Entonces, so therefore, without affecting the productive activity, we are also eh, working on promoting de que se that they develop um, sureste, donde hay agua. milk, where they have uh, milk in the south-southeast. Imagine how much water there is in the Papalapa in the Grijalva, in the Osumacinta, and even there is ganado, even a cattle eh, adaptado, that has adapted tropico, to the tropics con with capacity to produce milk. Entonces, so therefore, with the same uh, uh, businessmen of the uh, este, lake, we are, are taking forth these conjunta. actions in a conjunction, but above all, we have health matters. And this also is something that needs to be uh, become most important because the government is no longer in the service of any interest, created interest group, but the service of the people. They can act with liberty. Whereas before, the groups of created uh, interests, they used to finance the campaigns. And so therefore, the new president would come in and he couldn't do anything. On the contrary, he would have to give them. I can't talk more about that. It's something you guys should do your investigation okay we'll see you tomorrow thank you goodbye goodbye all right wow you know this was really impressive um i am uh, very impressed with this whole um thing here i'm going to close this because i want to stay on here and let you know that um I watched this before I taped it. Um, I was setting up my audio, and man, uh, there was so much meat to this um, recording of his um, in the morning. As I heard it, I was thinking, that's it. That's what we weren't getting. The fact that the, um, you know, they keep measuring uh the economic growth by how rich the rich people are getting and that's how they're measuring it wow you know it's all good we're making millions but everybody else was getting poorer and they were having worse conditions everything else was worse there was more violence insecurity everything during that period that they were doing so good that we were making all these multimillionaires that were benefiting from the loss of the of the uh, riches of Mexico were going to uh, private interests. Um, and yes, 
fourth in the nation now of the most millionaires. That really lets you know what what really is at hand when these people are saying, oh, you know, uh, they're not doing good. But they're not taking into, into account the fact that now we have all these jobs, all these uh, youth that are no longer on the streets, education, money for the elderly. Um, and can you imagine Fox saying, let's put the elderly to work after they've worked all their life? What the heck? Can you imagine? Let's tell him to go back to work. Now that uh, he's retired from the presidency and he's wanting his money. What, what happened to all the money he took? Did he save any of it? Any of that money he stole from the people? It's just unbelievable to me that they would even consider that. That is horrible. I, I just can't, I can't imagine that, um, <laughs> that, that anyone would even think that. But, you know, I, I am so happy with this program because, true, we need to measure the growth of a country by how well, now, you know, the people are earning better. Now, now people can have jobs. Now people um, make more, you know, an hour. Um, he's created so many jobs and there's so many more being created. Education. You know, now the education, which is a part of the uh, Constitution that was one of the rights, was being taken away and privatized. Can you imagine? I mean, that was supposed to be for free. We didn't even know that. They just sold it to us. They sold us a bill of goods that was bull. And I'm sorry to say it that way, but it's just, I can't believe how many people were in poverty or the doctors we didn't get because they, they closed the um, ability for the uh, people that, that qualified that had really good scores on their exams. And they said, no, we're only taking a thousand this year. So everybody else that did so well on the exams that could have been doctors and nurses and educators and um, all these higher level uh, uh, jobs that could have, we could have had more of these. And instead, they closed the education off. And not only did they not um, make it available, um, you know, it, it, it wasn't for free. But it wasn't even available to them in any way. They they just didn't have the the colleges. They closed it up. They they basically decided who would who would have a life and who wouldn't. Who were the elite going to be? Who were the ones that were going to be allowed to get an education, even if they were able to do the somehow get the money together to do the primary education? Were they going to be able to? Um, you know, to uh, continue. So maybe they did the prerequisites and then they weren't allowed in the colleges. These very ambi well, I'm going to say ambitious because it's ambitious to go to college. I mean, you, you, you're working towards your goals. You want to do something with your life. And uh, they would cut them off at the knees and say, no, you can't go. We're only letting these people go. Because they, they closed up the opportunities. They closed up the colleges. Um, I just wish that the American people knew more about this and understood what it is that AMLO is doing. And that's why I'm translating it, because I want you guys to know what is possible when a president or a high-level official or... If it's not a president, whatever, you know, deciding factors or people are placed in power, if the powers that be want it, they can make it good for everyone. But obviously, all they care about is their pocket. And I know that in my, uh, when, I, when my kids were going to school, they would tell me of the things they were taking away, like, no, uh, we don't have art classes anymore. No, we don't have music classes anymore. Um, 
they were taking away everything that was beautiful for the children to have a love for school and education. They took that all away because they were saving money so they can put more money in their pockets. The politicians. The politicians are the ones who did this to the American people. And the politicians are the ones that did it to Mexico and everybody else. And, you know, there's so much more, like, like there was some kind of black hand involved in doing this to the, all the Central American countries. They didn't do the neoliberal thing just to Mexico. They did it to all those countries that are now coming to the U.S. Uh, or trying, <laughs> all these immigrants, the, that was done to them by the neoliberals. And who are the neoliberals? Who, who set that up? I mean, when I was researching that, I was researching, there's this um, neo-political uh, uh, authority, uh, Nobel Peace Prize winner, Halife, who uh, was telling people what it was that caused it, you know, who was behind it. And uh, look it up, you guys. It's got to do with something called Operation Condor. And it was a plan that was going to make the Latin American countries subservient to somebody. Um, someone else was going to get rich. They were going to loan the money to the Latin American countries. And then when they paid back, they were only paying the interest. They would never be able to pay it off. So then what did they do? They took their riches from their country. They wound up, they're, they're like, they've got them in such a state of, uh, you just, there's so much to know. There's so much to know. Uh, Peru, uh, they've done it to Peru. Um, there's all the countries down there, Nicaragua, San Salvador, all of them. They've all been uh, hit by this politics. And uh, it's about people getting rich and the poor getting poorer and then stealing all the wealth and then making the countries subservient to someone. And uh, I think it was Kissinger and Margaret Thatcher that, that uh, worked on this uh, plan. Um, I mean, I, look it up. I, I haven't looked too deeply into it. But the more that is coming to light, the more I'm curious. What is it? Why, what is it that they're trying to hide from us? Why, why that when somebody tries to mention... Halifa, Halifa tried to mention this stuff. They blocked him for life on Twitter. Can you imagine that? They blocked Halifa for life on Twitter because he was talking about who these rich people are that are impoverishing all these nations. Uh, anyway, I hope I don't get myself in trouble, but I want people to know. And uh, if I turn up dead, <laughs> you know, it's probably because of this little thing here. Or who knows, I might get banned from YouTube too. And Facebook and everywhere that this might go. I have it on Twitch, Facebook, uh, YouTube. It's all simultaneously trans, uh, you know, going through the air right now. So uh, I hope I don't piss the wrong people off because that could be dangerous. <laughs> but... You know, I've got to tell. And um, that's that's how I see it. Okay, you guys, goodbye. And please um, like and subscribe. Uh, I'm going to be working with uh, other YouTubers. Um, I've been working with um, translating other YouTubers' material. And I've also done a uh, video with um, uh, Inti News. Uh, uh, Wilmer Dominguez uh, Ramar, and uh, I plan to be doing another collaboration with hopefully all the women of YouTube. Uh, I'm going to put a call out to them. Uh, we need to get together because we bring a certain element of um, the feminine, you know, the soft side of, of life. But anyway, so if you want to know about this, um, please subscribe to my channel. And uh, I like to translate and, and uh, let the people know what's going on. Thank you very much for listening. Bye.